Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, all about how to best use LinkedIn for marketing. My name is Erica from Advanced Partners, and we are happy to be the sponsor for today's webinar. Here at Advanced, we specialize in providing working capital to staffing firms nationwide. We have an exciting webinar for you all today. Before we get to it, though, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. First, this webinar is being recorded, and a link of the recording will be sent to everybody via a post-event email. If you have a question you'd like to submit for our speaker, please use the Ask a Question widget located in your console. A survey will launch at the conclusion of this event, and we hope you will take a, mo a moment to complete it. Lastly, if you experience any technical issues, please use the help widget shaped like a question mark, again, located in your console. Now that that's out of the way, let's introduce our speaker, Melissa Twing. Melissa joined ClearEdge Marketing in 2022, and after two years of advancing social media success for clients, she became the Director of Content Strategy and Social Media. In her current role, she is responsible for defining the content and social media strategy for ClearEdge clients and overseeing the social media team to help personal brands and corporate channels drive meaningful results. She is a mom of three, a photographer, and re very recently became infatuated with golf. Melissa, take it away. Thank you so much, Erica. I'm really happy to be here, everyone. Um, I hope today is fun, interactive. Um, like Erica said, feel free to drop any questions in the Q&A, and then we'll be using the attendee chat uh, throughout our time today. So let's go ahead and kick off. Um, I will go ahead and let you read this little note from the legal team, um, but I'd love to hear where you are calling in from. Please feel free to drop it in the chat. And I did want to mention, we know that there's a hurricane and our hearts go out to everyone. I'm sure some of you and your colleagues are affected. Um, and we just really thank you for being here despite the craziness kind of going on in the world right now. All right. Is anyone sharing where they come from? Not yet. All right. Chicago. We got a Chicago in there. All right. Atlanta. Got New Jersey. Wisconsin. Grand Rapids. All right. I'm in um, Detroit area. Awesome. So if you well, keep, go ahead and share where you're coming from in the chat, um, but I'll go ahead and get started. So if you're here, you're probably in one of two camps. You're either, um, maybe you play a role in the social media presence of your organization. Maybe you're responsible for it or your team is responsible for it. Or maybe you are a leader and you want to build and boost your personal brand on LinkedIn and become this established thought leader. Maybe you follow some people on social and you're like, how the heck do they do that? Um, and you wanna be a voice that your clients, your colleagues and your industry peers recognize and value. Um, or maybe you're here for both reasons. Um, maybe you're here to boost your company brand and your own personal brand. The good news is the two are very intertwined and the same rules apply to both. Um, so let's have some fun, get curious and learn together. Um, so what's on the agenda today, I'm going to cover why companies even spend all of this time and resources and energy into social media and LinkedIn specifically. And then we'll talk about how to make the best first impressions. So you're setting up your profile for success. And then once that's all in order, how do you create content that sticks? There's so much content out there. Um, and then lastly, we'll get into why you shouldn't post and ghost and how being active on LinkedIn and just that outbound engagement, really being social is just as important as what you post. Um, I'd love to hear from you now too, if you could drop in the chat why you're here today. Are you here to help build your personal brand, company brand, or maybe both? All right. So let's address the hippo in the room, shall we? It can be a little awkward or maybe even uncomfortable, right? To be on that virtual stage, whether you're representing your company 
or as an individual, you might feel like this baby hippo in Thailand who really did become um, an overnight viral sensation. I love this picture. She's kind of hiding, showing half of herself. I feel like we can all feel that, right? Um, there's this fear. What if I screw up? This is so awkward. Or maybe like, I'm too old for this. This is for Gen Z. Um, I think we kind of all get that imposter syndrome, especially when it comes to social media. Um, I will tell you, I work with many executives in the staffing and workforce solutions industry. And I promise you, everyone gets a little nervous to put themselves out there, even if they do a hundred times. But the good news is you will gain confidence the more you show up. And I like to just remind everyone, it's not that serious. Um, we're all just people, right, on the other side of the screen who get excited about a cute little hippo. Um, if you approach social media, that includes LinkedIn, um, as this place where you can be creative, you can have some fun, perhaps take a risk or two, connect with people. It really makes the difference. So my message to you as we get going is stop hiding behind that tree and uh, really show the world what you have to offer. All right. And I was taking an eye in the chat. It looks like most of you are here for your personal brand and your company brand. So that's very exciting. So why LinkedIn? Why not Facebook, right? Why is this a platform that continues to see record levels of engagement and growth, record levels of um, trust, whereas some of the other social channels don't have that? So why is that? I think one thing to, to know is that if you're in B2B, LinkedIn is the place to be. When teams share, everyone wins. So if you think about this, every single individual at your organization, they have this personal network that's different from yours. Think of who's on your LinkedIn. Even if you have 100 connections or you have 10,000, it's friends, it's family, people from high school, people from college, previous colleagues, maybe some groups that you're a part of, maybe some people that you don't even know or you can't remember how they're a connection. So that collective network that you have is really massive. I like this saying that your network is your net worth. And that really is true. I think oftentimes employees are the first touch point with a brand. So you have a lot of ownership, whether you know it or not. And I think that's why it's so important. That, and that's why companies care about having a personal profile that's well-crafted and that aligns with company branding. And here's a quick tip. You can't assume that employees will just update their profile. The minute they start your organization, you need to give them the tools to do that. It really should be an intentional part of the onboarding process and something that really is revisited throughout the year, especially if you have a change to your mission statement, if you have a change to maybe some of your services, make sure you're including your biggest brand ambassadors and giving them the tools to showcase that on social. And then another thing to note is you can't assume that employees are going to feel safe or even empowered to share company content. Um, it also needs to be intentional effort to lead and guide them, even incentivize, right? At Clear Edge, we, sometimes we give out free coffee and I will do anything for free coffee. Um, and it's when employees, when they share company related content, there is a huge ripple effect um, that, you know, it, it exponentially increases that visibility you might have heard um, that people want to connect with people, not brands. And that really is true. And there's a ton of data that um, really backs that up. So if you think about it, content shared by employees, you'll see it just receives eight times more engagement than content shared by brand, um, by brand channels. And brand messages shared by employees can reach over 500% for further than if shared by the organization itself. So if you are um, in charge of your company's social and you're putting something out there and it might only get 10, 12, 15 
reactions. And if you or a colleague were to put out that same kind of message, you will see further growth. That's just the way the platform is intended. The algorithm is in individual's favor. So know that it's not, don't look at that as um, any indication of company content that's really not hitting the mark. It's just the way that the platform is um, designed. Got to work a little harder as a, as a company. Um, and it's not just the reach that's so powerful when employee, uh, employees share. It really comes down to this authenticity and trust. So if you think about it, when employees share their experiences, their insights, their achievements related to their work, it adds this humanization. Okay, I know her. I trust her. That is really important right now, especially in a time where consumers and professionals, they're really prioritizing that genuine, that transparency. Um, and people are just willing to read and generally engage more with any type of content when it's surfaced through friends and people they know and trust. So we've just heard how companies benefit from their employees having a voice on the platform. Now you might be wondering how you can convince your employees and your team or even yourself, right, to get active. Here's what you're going to tell your team. That LinkedIn is this free professional landing page to showcase your expertise, your achievements, your passions. Where else can you do that, right? Give your employees permission to brag, empower them to brag, brag about the people who brag, right? Where else can we have this entire page dedicated to experience, expertise, achievements? I like to think about it as you've worked really hard to get here and there's really no shame in showing that off a little bit, but I say that with a caveat. Once you establish your trust and your authority, Social media should be used to then impact people, not impress people, right? After you establish your credibility, you want to shift your lens from me to your customer. So social media really is a place to amplify your voice, especially on LinkedIn. It's a top ranked, trusted global platform. The world of work is global. We know that it's increasingly global. So social media just removes that barrier. It transcends boundaries. So you connect with um, those across the globe and it gives you a voice in the industry. And then there's this uh, unlocking business development and networking opportunities. Your customers are on LinkedIn. They're spending time on there. And what's so interesting is you're able to see who's connected with them. So maybe you can introduce um, you can form an introduction to kick off a conversation. Really, it's so much more personal than blasting out to an email list when you really aren't sure who's on the other end or much about them. Then last, uh, another benefit for employees is you want to work with good people, right? So how are you going to keep your pipeline strong, attract talent, and um, attract those to your employer brand without putting some effort behind it? So the more attractive an organization and your employees are on social, really the better it is for potential new hires. If you think about it, if you're weighing between two companies and one is posting generic, kind of boring AI generated posts, and one is showing their vibrant culture and spotlighting their team, candidates gonna wanna go for uh, the employer that has that better culture. So keep that in mind too. Last point I'll make here. I promise LinkedIn isn't paying me to say any of this. I'm just a fan. 92% um, of B2B buyers, they're willing to engage with a sales professional who is known as an industry thought leader. So if you back up, okay, why is that? There's really this perceived expertise and reputation in the industry, right? That plays a really crucial role in the B2B buying process. So thought leaders are trusted. In the context of B2B sales teams, being a thought leader can help sales professionals build that credibility with potential buyers. It's warming up your lead. You're not going in cold. You have this established trust and credibility and your peers are helping you do that. Um, but what do you need to be that thought leader? You need quality content, 
relevant content, content that helps B2B buyers make better informed decisions. So now we're going to talk about setting your profile up for success, whether it's a personal brand or a corporate brand. So let's talk first impressions. This is what someone sees when they go to your profile. You can even open your phone right now or in another browser, look at your personal profile, your company's profile. If you can't remember what it looks like, this is the above the fold profile view. So this example here is from the CEO of Clear Edge, Leslie Vickery. She has this updated professional headshot and I like it because it still shows a bit of personality. Notice it's not a car selfie, right? Even though those are fun, those are save those for Facebook. It's not a cropped wedding photo. I'm a photographer, so I'm always hard on people for this, but really a professional photo, it speaks volumes. You put your best foot forward, shows who you are. And then to complement that, she has a cover photo. It's branded. She has a keyword rich headline, which we'll talk about. And if I were to scroll down, I'd see that her about section tells her story of who she is in the industry. Um, her profile URL is custom, so she's findable. You don't want it a bunch of letters and numbers. You want it to be your exact name. So if someone is searching for you on LinkedIn, you show up. I will dig into each of these sections a little bit more um, so we can talk about best practices. So let's talk more about the headline, what you see there in the, in the box. Um, think of this as your elevator pitch. It's important that these words specifically are filled with what the words that people are searching. So the higher your profile is ranked when someone searches for, let's say a particular term like workforce solutions or staffing, the more views your profile is likely to get. So you have 120 characters to work with here. You'll wanna use them wisely. A lot of times kind of following this format of your role title, make sure to include your industry, any specialties that you have, and then any awards or achievements that will elevate your personal brand. And if you don't have them, that's okay. Um, tell your story. What do you care about and what makes you unique? So this is an example of a corporate page. Same rules apply here. Um, you want a clear logo. Make sure that that cover image is optimized for mobile. So go ahead and take a look at it. If it's not, make sure that you get that adjusted the better your corporate social page is set up with the right keywords, um, and then the more often you post, it really helps improve that visibility. So on search engines like Google, your company profile can pop up. Um, it really just improves brand recognition by having more mentions about um, you across various social networks, results in higher ranking in search engines, and it helps ultimately drive that traffic to your website. All right, next slide here. So this is the about section um, for Leslie Vickery. Like I said, the CEO of Clear Edge. Um, it defines who she is, what she does, and why that's important. You can use up to about 2,600 characters which is like 370 to 600 words, really depending on the words that you use. Think of this as a lot of prime SEO space. So use it to your fullest and update it. If you want a new award, if you're um, working on a new project or you've achieved something, update that. You really want to tell a story here and make sure that you're paying the most attention to the first three lines. It's most important. It's what's visible before a visitor has to click that see more. Um, and then I've included a summary of what kind of format to follow if you're stuck. So start with that hook, talk about your mission, tell your audience why you do what you do, um, showcase some of those expertise and skills, uh, what you're good at your accomplishments, how your expertise delivered results in the past. If you don't have any personal accomplishments like awards, you can share company awards, 
Um, and then make sure to include a call to action. This is where um, people will get an indication of how you want to connect with them. So maybe it's to visit your website. It could be check out my recent content, send a message. You want to be really specific here. And if you say, hey, send a message, make sure you're actually checking your messages so you aren't leaving people hanging. Um, and then also there's this area here for top skills. Um, so that's just a quick at a glance. What are the, I think it's five things that you're good at. You want to include that as well. Okay. So now that we've talked about your personal profile, how you set up your trust, your credibility, um, whether it's for a personal brand or your company brand now, how the heck do you get people to stop in their scroll, right? People are just scrolling and scrolling through social media. And it's a lot of the same thing, especially in the era of AI or where ChatGPT can give us a post. So how do you make yours different and how do you make it stand out? So I think we all wanna be proud of what we put out there, right? We want to connect with our audience and receive high levels of engagement. A lot of, we wanna go viral, right? We don't want people questioning who posted that, who was that? I'll uh, tell you, I think we've all had a story of some time in our career, whether it was through social media or something else that we just weren't proud. Um, we didn't want to attach our name to something. Um, I, will, I tell you that because we're all going to fail. Even if you do social media every single day or you're just getting started, um, we're going to think that something is funny that no one else does. We're going to have typos. Uh, but the only way to reduce those errors and those typos is to A, set really clear goals, and B, get another set of eyes. Um, I'm not saying that you have to have a really robust review process, especially you know, if you're a small team, or maybe you're just posting for yourself. But as much as you can, especially if you're not sure, it's always nice to have a nice gut check. Okay, so define your audience. It seems pretty obvious, right? But in order to create content that really does stop that scroll, that cuts through the noise, you need to get really specific on who you're speaking to. So a good place to start with that is for company pages and for premium personal pages, you can get a sense of your follower demographics in terms of location, job function, company size, industry, and seniority right in those metrics. So get curious, dig into the analytics, maybe go into it with a thought of what you think your audience is, and it'd be really interesting to then um, match that with what your audience actually is and get curious about it. Find any gaps. Maybe you have a large presence in a geographic area that you haven't yet explored, or maybe your audience isn't actually the decision makers. We see people make that, that mistake that they think they're speaking to um, their buyers when actually they're not. Um, so that is important because you'll need to adjust your messaging based on who your audience is. Um, and then when it comes to a lot of us in the staffing industry, are you speaking to talent? Are you speaking to clients? Or are you trying to connect with both audiences? A lot of times content, you can do both if you are very purposeful about it. And if you're not speaking to both, my best advice is to call it out. So um, if you're speaking to candidates, make sure you start that copy with job seekers, like that keyword. So if it's not a job seeker, they can scroll right past. You're not gonna be everything to everyone. So it's important that you're differentiating if you have multiple audiences. All right. So keeping audience in mind, it's also important to set your goals up front. Here are three that I would recommend, which you can tweak really based on what's important to you um, and some, maybe some of your own personal or professional goals. By being an active member on LinkedIn, your awareness is going to increase, which can be measured by follower count and post impressions. So those are the two metrics you wanna look at to 
um, as key performance indicators of whether or not you're reaching a wider audience, whether or not you're reaching um, more people with your posts. And then of course, engagement, building an engaged audience, you want them to take action through comments and maybe some reposts, some direct messages. Those are all really good indicators that your content is cutting through the noise and being worthy of engagement. If you think about it, engagement is really that currency of social media. It's our way of knowing if what anyone cares, if anyone cares about what we're posting, right? I think that's why it can be so vulnerable. And then lastly, conversions, of course, we want to drive traffic to the website. Um, we want to send people to a form, whatever it is, make sure you're measuring that. Use a resource like Bitly or any other UTM so that you're actually seeing um, who's going to your website from your social media. And you might be surprised. So when we think about what to post, where people, is go, where people go wrong is they lose focus on the intention. The intention really is your desired outcome. So is your post, is it intended to promote a product or service? Is it intended to drive awareness and conversions? Or is it intended to educate the audience to establish that thought leadership and provide immediate value? Or is it intended to show them your human side and find some commonalities? At the end of the day, you think of social media as the fuel to set your content on fire, but it really starts and ends with the intention. So this is an example. I'm gonna show you a few examples of um, post intentions. The intention of this particular post is from Jeremy is um, included in, or he wrote an article um, that really shared why Advanced Partners is this remarkable organization. It was named among the 50 best companies to watch in 2024. So he put that out there. This is an opportunity to grow his cliented content. And then this is an example of an intention to promote a brand again, but this is for a corporate page. This is the company I work for, Clear Edge. Um, they are creating a graphic that shares a testimonial. You'll see testimonials are very popular on social, and this is great. A lot of us have these. Um, and what we're actually finding recently is very authentic testimonials even perform better. So if you are getting an email from a customer or even a text, I know a lot of times today, you know, we're texting with our clients um, or you're getting a, however you communicate with your clients, take a screenshot and ask for permission. Be like, hey, that meant a lot to me. Is it okay if we share that? Testimonials can be a lot more um, natural um, but these work well too. Some really well worded, um, you know, I'm sure in this case we asked for a testimonial. Um, so these work well too, but just keep that in mind that it's okay to show up authentically with a screenshot to promote your brand. And then when it comes to educational content, that's where you show up to teach, to give something to your audience. Um, this is where you can show that you're a trusted voice in some of those trending conversations, offering a unique point of view. So here's an example of a post for um, Clear Edge, corporate brand. It's teaching an audience how to maximize content. And it starts off with like something a little catchy, right? Hey, we have a secret for you. You're allowed to repurpose your marketing content. Okay, maybe it's not so much of a secret, but it's a good reminder Repurposing content not only helps you get more mileage out of great content piece, but it also makes sure that you're reaching your audience in the way that's most appealing to them. Not sure how to repurpose? Here are three ideas to get you started. And then it gives the three ideas. If, as you can see from this post, we're not asking anything of the, of the audience. We're giving them value. So we're hoping as someone's scrolling through and they see this, like, huh, that clear edge, they know what they're talking about. 
that's really interesting. I never thought to turn my blog post into a carousel. It's that quick thought leadership takeaway. And then same thing here for personal brand, educational content. Jeremy posted about buyers, they're more likely to rate staffing suppliers highly than any other contingent workforce, workforce programs. Why does it matter? And he gives some reasoning behind that. Um, and then he links to a resource. That's a great way to educate your audience. There are tons of resources out there. When it comes to educational content, it doesn't need to be something that you've created, your team, your company. Take some articles in Harvard Business Review or Forbes or whatever um, publications that you're, you know and trust and your audience knows and trust and share that. But go a little step further than I was reading in Forbes and blah, 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 blah. You want to make sure that you're offering a point of view. Maybe it's like, this is what's missing from this article. I would add this perspective or um, maybe it ties into a story of I was talking with a candidate today and the one thing that they care about really is um, a company's values which backs up the recent data in this article. So it's really telling a full story rather than just linking to an article. Then connect content. This is my favorite. It's really the social part of social media. It creates conversation. You show up as a human. Um, it creates conversations right within the comments. Here's an example of advanced partners having a barbecue. Um, this is where it's really appealing for future candidates, um, helpful for their employer brand. Photos, the photos don't have to be professional, right? We all have phones. Um, when it comes to pulling off something like this, it's having someone have ownership. Hey, you get some, get some photos of the cookout. We wanna share it on social media. And I love how playful they were here. Hot dog, it sure was a good time. And if you talk with them in person, you'll see that it's, it's authentic to who they are. They're a little bit playful. They have some fun. They really care about each other and their team. So that needs to come across in that connect content on social media. If their content was very serious and it was, they didn't show any of this. They didn't show the human side. And then, you know, they have a new client in the door. They're going to see that. They're going to be, huh, it doesn't, it doesn't match. So make sure what you're putting out there, whether it's personally or, um, as a corporate brand, it's truly authentic to who you are. And then I love this so much. Um, this is an example of a post intended to connect with an audience. This is the CEO of Clear Edge and Leslie. Um, and she has a picture of her son. And I know a lot of times people will be a little nervous. Like, do I share personal? And this is the perfect way to do this. Um, According to the World Economic Forum, she writes, it will take 131 years to close the global gender gap, five generations. When my son was born eight years ago, I naively hoped he'd see gender equality in his lifetime, but we're still generations away. And then she tells the story. So that's a perfect example of how you can create cultural topics, topics that care, your audience care about and, and tell a story. Um, as you can see, it got great engagement and it just opens a door to conversation. So if Leslie sees someone at a conference, they already have that connection. Like, oh, you have an eight-year-old son and you care about the gender gap. It just removes that barrier um, and connects with people online. And those conversations so often turn into conversations in person or um, virtually as well. All right, let's go to the next slide here. Kind of touched on this, but you know, a lot of people ask like, what is the secret? What is the secret for this social media? How can I cut through the noise, um, be seen as trusted? And truly my advice is as simple as be yourself. Unapologetically, this is why we're all in love with this hippo is <laughs> even though she doesn't know it, um, she's unapologetically herself. So make sure you're intentional with that um, and you lead with that authenticity. So when it comes to um, 
you know, a lot of people think, okay, social media, I posted, I'm done. I'm going to schedule my post and I am going to dust my hands off and I'm done for the day. That's not true or it shouldn't be true. Don't post and then ghost. Um, you want to be very intentional, human and social. So for example, if you are in any type of sales role or just at, at your organization, if you're looking to build a connection with someone and you don't know them personally, you want to start warming up that lead, that connection. So what that could look like is engage with their content for a couple of weeks. That could be a personal, insightful comment. It could be a like, combo of the two. Give it some time. Give it time to see who they are, engage with them, nurture them. And then once it feels comfortable and you feel like, okay, they might recognize my name, they might they might know who I am, then, then that's where you send a message. And in the message, it could be follow up with a recent post that they shared, right? Add maybe a personal sentiment about that. Maybe you look at their profile a little deeper and find a similarity. Maybe there's a connection you two have in common. Maybe you went to the same school, you live in the same state, whatever it is, find common ground. Um, and then always keep it short. Like if you're in the inbox and you're at that point of social selling after you've created some sort of connection, you want to keep it very short. Um, as you can imagine, I'm sure you yourself and your clients have a ton and ton of messages. So make it very attention grabbing and short, um, and tell them what, what you want out of it. Maybe the first message is just, hey, wanted to introduce myself. I like I like what you've been sharing. I also have a son. Or it's, you know, um, finding that common ground. And then you follow up with, would you like to hop on a call or what, whatever that may be. So when it comes to, um, you know, engaging with content, a lot of people will say, well, how do I, I don't see stuff from my clients. I don't see stuff from my colleagues or the candidates that I'm working with. So the first thing I'll tell them is to engage with the content you want to see more of. So if you're not seeing uh, content from your clients, it's because you're not engaging with them. LinkedIn is smart and LinkedIn's like a matchmaker. And if you're engaging with Danielle, you'll get Danielle's content and vice versa, which is why it's so important that you want to put out content that your target audience, your clients, your colleagues and candidates engage with because you'll show up in their feed. So it's kind of like that reciprocity. So aside from engaging with those who you want to see content from, you can optimize and customize your feed which really takes back that LinkedIn algorithm back into your control a little bit. It gives back some of the time in your day so you can really focus on networking with the right people. Um, what you can do here is follow hashtags. Um, when you search for a specific hashtag, maybe it's human resources, maybe it's talent acquisition, whatever that is, you follow that and then you will start seeing content in your feed from those that you don't follow, those that you're not connected with, that are sharing on that topic. And then what you can also do is customize your feed with filters. So say you wanna be really intentional about, you wanna book 10 meetings with certain individuals this month. Um, you can actually create a filter. So you're just, your feed is just seeing content from them. This is done a lot easier in Sales Navigator, but I know a lot of people don't have Sales Navigator, so I want to make sure you could see how to customize it with free tools that are out there. All right, so let's get into some tips and tricks for personal and corporate brands. These are a lot of questions that I'm asked often, and truly number one, other than how do I make my content stick, how do I stop the scroll, is this. When is the best time to post and interact? So... The short answer is it depends as like almost anything with social, but know that LinkedIn's algorithm prioritizes posts that generate immediate engagement. So likes, comments, shares right after it's posted. That's why it's so important that you're not posting at midnight when your audience is not online or most of your audience is not online. And it matters what the initial response is. 
So, you know, at Clear Edge, there's times if we're posting, we love to support our colleagues and comment and share because we know that will just help boost that post to reach an even wider audience. So as a company, if there is a company post and it's a, an exciting announcement or something that you really want people to see, ask your colleagues, hey, I'm going to post this at noon. Can you engage with it? Can you share it? That not only expands the post reach, but it shows LinkedIn that people are caring about this post. So there's there's no harm in that. Um, but universally, the best times to post happen to be Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I think people are still a little bit tired on Mondays. And then mornings. Um, sometime, if you see in this dark area here, that's where you're going to see the highest engagement. So Tuesday, like 9, 10, 11 a.m., Wednesday, same thing. Use this as a, as a resource, but do your own testing as well. Um, maybe you'll find that some of your audience is active on Saturdays. That could be true for you. It just depends. And then there's the hashtags, another question we get all the time. So recently this has changed within the last couple of months. So LinkedIn has a new um, semantic search, which means LinkedIn is getting smarter. Um, it used to rely a lot heavier on hashtags. So if you were speaking of staffing and staffing wasn't included in, in your post copy, you needed to use that hashtag there. But that's less critical now. Um, really what you need to focus on is context rich posts. And then that's on LinkedIn's job to match your content with the right audience. So when it comes to hashtags, don't hashtag stuff, only include a couple um, and you wanna make sure that they're your content is quality. That's so much more important than the types of hashtags that you use. So I will, um, we're gonna have some time for questions, but I wanna leave you with this, that may you be the next little shiny hippo. Um, be authentic, have fun with social media and don't be afraid to try some new things. And that concludes my presentation. I'll turn it back over to Erica. Thank you, Melissa. That was wonderful. Lots of good content um, on how to approach and tackle LinkedIn. So we really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, we did have some audience questions trickle in. I'll read them off one by one. First okay. one, how often should I be updating my personal work experience in LinkedIn? Is there a schedule I should keep to or should I only update when I get a promotion or a new role? Yeah, that's a great question. So when it comes to work experience, of course, if you get a new role, yes. If there's something that has changed within your company or your role, absolutely update that. Um, but aside from that, that copy um, beneath your experience is some really great space as well. Um, so what you'll want to do is say your company won a recent award or like I said earlier, maybe your company is expanding its services, include that in your description. Um, and if you are a person that is, you know, the, the champion and the social media um, expert at your organization, be looking at your employees description as well, what they're putting under their experience and maybe give them some pointers, give them some language, right? As marketers, we can we can help control the, the narrative and the language. It's really just an ask like, hey, here's, here's a blurb. Would you mind adding this to your profile? Um, I think most people are really receptive. They just don't think about it. Um, so just kind of be on the lookout on ways that you can update your own personal experience section and look at what your employees are doing as well. Great, thank you. Uh, we yeah. got two more coming in. Um, quick note, I saw someone mention the today slides download is not working. I'm so sorry about that. But yes, these will be available uh, post event. Uh, you will get these in an email. Um, so I'm sorry about that, but you will have access to them. Uh, next question. As somebody looking for her first entry level position after college, how can I optimize my profile to attract the employer I want to work for? Absolutely. That's a great question. And there are some staffing firms, I think, maybe on this call. So uh, <laughs> um, connect with them, connect with your staffing firm, that, uh, staffing firm, that's number one. Um, but as far as your profile, 
you want to be using those keywords. So say you're trying to find a job in social media, your profile headline needs to include social media marketer. Um, and then what are the skills that employers are looking for in a social media marketer, SEO, storytelling, marketing strategy, content strategy, make sure all of those words that a recruiter would be searching for are visible in your profile both in your headline and then also in your about section and then share on that content. So if you, your profile is all about social media marketing, but you're sharing about, you know, finance, there's a, there's a disconnect. Um, so make sure that you're continuing to post often on topics related to social media marketing. That makes sense. Thank you. And good luck with your job hunt. Um, next one, how often would you say LinkedIn updates their algorithm? Are there things I should do to make sure my posts do not get buried in the feed? Yeah. So part one of that question, how often does LinkedIn update the algorithm? So it depends. Um, the best source for me that I look for algorithm updates is from social media today. What I like about that is you can follow them on social. They have a website. Um, it's very, very quick reporting. So for example, when LinkedIn came out with the update with hashtags and they gave us some information, doesn't always tell you you need to use two hashtags and make sure this is what they are, but it gives you a little bit of guidance um, that, hey, we're getting smarter um, with, with our content and you don't need to overuse hashtags a lot of that like information will be right directly on social media today, the day it happens. So as marketers, sometimes we're thrown off, like, okay, we don't need hashtags anymore. And then we pivot. Um, and it happens a lot, you know, video is becoming much more popular. Um, but when it comes to the, the algorithm, and I think a lot of times we get really hung up on like, okay, this post performed well because it had enough white space. It was this many characters, it had a graphic. It's not always that deep, right? Sometimes you just hit the right people and you got great engagement and it was great content. So this always goes back to prioritize the best content, but be smart and think of the algorithm. So um, I wish LinkedIn would give us, you know, the keys to the castle and all of the the ways that we can expand our network and increase our engagement, but it just doesn't. Um, so do your best, um, do your own testing, look at your own analytics and draw some conclusions. And it might be that, all right, historically Tuesday is a great time to post, but man, I've been seeing a dip on Tuesdays. So you're going to shift and you're going to post on Thursdays and see if that makes a difference. Really social is such a testing ground and a place where you experiment. Um, and what was the second part of that question, Erica? Um, what can I do to make sure my posts do not get buried in the feed? Oh, buried in the feed. Okay. So, you know, I think if you're having trouble with impressions, so if you look rule of thumb, whether you're a personal brand or corporate brand, about 10% of your audience should be seeing your content. Any less than that will show it is getting buried. LinkedIn is not sending your content out. So if that's the case, that signals that, okay, I need to shift something here. Maybe it's the way, maybe you're using too much AI um, and LinkedIn is flagging that and not sending your content wide and far. Maybe it's the time of day. So look at that first, first look at your impressions. And if it is less than 10% of your audience, so if you have 10,000 followers and less than a thousand people are consistently seeing your posts, you might have a problem. If it's way more than that, you're doing great. Keep it up. <laughs> um, so yes, first get a little curious um, and then test with some of that, like app, ask people to engage and see if that helps. You know, whether it's your colleagues, whether it's friends, whatever it is, if a post goes live, just ask a couple people, hey, I'm really, this, this one's important to me. I'm really hoping that people see this, ask. Um, and see if that does anything, because like I shared before, that hour after post goes live is important for the algorithm 
for LinkedIn to determine whether or not that post is valuable. So test test around with a couple of things and uh, see what works. Thank you. All right, yeah. last one. Um, <clears throat> is it better to engage with the prospect list via your personal page or through the corporate page? Interesting. Yeah, good question. Um, both. So like I shared earlier, people crave human connection. People want to connect with people, not brands. So I would say if you had to choose between the two and you're in the position of sales, be very active as a personal brand. You want to be sharing thought leadership. It should complement your company page. I'm not saying to ignore the company page, but you want to be showing up as a human and connecting with them. At the same time, whether you or someone else is engaging that corporate page, also engage with that individual. But I think uh, if you're in a position of sales, an individual is much more likely to connect with a with the person rather than um, the company. Wonderful. That was the last question. So this concludes today's webinar. Thank you everybody for being here. Melissa and the team at Clear Edge, thank you guys so much for your expertise. This was very valuable. Again, for all of our attendees, you will be receiving the recording and the slides in a post-event email. Um, thank you guys. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye, everyone.